You're listening to the Staging Sips Podcast with Lori Fisher. This podcast is dedicated to helping real estate staging CEOs build healthy businesses that grow, flow, and thrive. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy to be with you, especially because today I get to geek out about one of my favorite tools that we use inside of our business. So uh, I'm not going to keep you guessing or holding on. And you've already read the title, so you know it's Google Calendar. But um, in kind of keeping with our theme of the last several weeks about systems and processes, Google Calendar is probably one of my favorite tools for our systems and process. And I'm going to make the case for it today. And I'm going to make the case for Google in general, the Google products, um, because they have really been a game changer in my business. So we're going to dive into some really tactical things that you could think about when you're considering what tools you use inside your business. Because as we talked about, when you evaluate your business, you're going to be always evaluating your people, processes, and tools. And you're going to be assessing, do you have the right mix of those right things that you need to get things done? And I have found Google products to really have a lot of what we need um, and the ability to do just so much. So I'm going to make the case for that today. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to take a minute. If you have listened to the podcast and you have benefited from it in any way, shape or form, I would love for you to rate and review the podcast because when you do that, it puts it in front of other business owners. And my mission with the podcast is to get in front of as many business owners as possible who might be struggling and not have clarity around growing their staging business. I felt very alone as I developed what I did. And I don't want that for a single business owner out there. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, I would so appreciate it. Okay, so let's dive into Google and Google Workspace. So first off, if you're running a business, you really want to, and you think you want to use Google products like Google Drive and um, Google Calendar and, and Sheets and all of that, I recommend that you sign up for a Google Workspace account. Now, there are several reasons why you do that. We'll put the show notes in the link to access um, Google Workspace. But first of all, everything is cloud-based. So this means it's not on any person's uh, desktop or hard drive. So if anything gets corrupted or lost or you know, if you have an employee and they leave the business, if they leave and for whatever reason you don't have access to their computer or you know their password to get into their computer, you don't want to have files hanging out on people's computers. You really want things to be cloud-based. Also, because you might have remote um, team members, like uh, you know, I would say my office queen works remotely, um, even though she is local to where my zip code is for my business. She actually works remotely most of the time, so. It's just a really great thing to have everything cloud-based. And of course, there's a lot of storage when you do it that way. Um, you also have apps on your phone to access your um, information at any given time from wherever you might be. Um, you have, again, visibility for your full team as needed for any files or appointments or anything like that. Also, all of the Google products like Gmail and um, Drive and Calendar, a lot of them work with automations with other apps that you might be using for your business. So it just gives you a ton of flexibility. And that said, I didn't mention that you can have a branded email address in your Gmail so that you can add your domain name to the end of anything. So, you know, like Lori at Rethink Home Interiors, that's really because I have set up a Google workspace and that we use, everybody gets a branded email address through Gmail when you have Google works uh, Google Workspace. It works globally. You can go in and when you sign up, it asks you what region you're in. And it's literally, literally pretty much everywhere on the planet is covered by Google. So anybody who's listening to me who um, is located anywhere in the world, Google Workspace will likely work for you. It's got built-in encryption so that if you have any sensitive information in there, they have a really solid encryption uh, backing their products um, because, of course, we've got client names, addresses, phone numbers, you know, emails, all of that. So you really want something that's encrypted. Um, plans range from a very reasonable $6 per user per month 
and it can be just a zero, you know, a a one member user. So if it's just you and your business, you can start already and then it can grow with you to well beyond um, 300 or more team members. So it really has the flexibility to grow with you as you grow. And their price points, like I said, range from $6 per user per month to $18 per user per month, depending on how much storage you want and some of the other bells and whistles that you might want slash need. So for us, we're still at the $6 per user per month um, membership. We've had that for 11 years in business at this point. So it's really worked beautifully for us. But today, you know, that's to sign up for a Google Workspace. And then once you have access to Google Workspace, then you have access to Gmail, Google Drive, um, Google Sheets, and um, Google Calendar. So today I'm just going to focus on Google Calendar and to tell you how we use it in our business. And hopefully it can be a tool or resource for you. So one of the great things about Google Calendar is that you can create as many calendars as you want. And then when you are looking at your Google Calendar online, you can toggle open as many calendars as you want at any given time. So if you have, you know, two or two or more team members, you can toggle on to see all of those team members' schedules and calendars and where they are on any given day. Um, and then so you can customize what you're seeing. So if you only want to see your calendar appointments today, you can toggle off everybody else's. But if you want to see where the entire team is across your organization, you can toggle on to see everybody's calendars. And you can do that um, super easily throughout the day, depending on what you want to look at at any given moment. So it's really fantastic. And again, the great thing is, is that there is an app on your phone. So your team members can do the same thing. You can do this remotely. You can look at your own individual calendar or as many calendars as you want at a given time, right from your mobile device. Okay. So the, the couple of key ways that we use Google Calendar is, first of all, scheduling visibility. And then the next thing is information sharing. So let me tell you a little bit about scheduling visibility first, and then I'll tell you about information sharing. So scheduling vis visibility for us, um, we do this in two ways. So the first thing is we have our individual team member calendars, and then we also have our service calendars. So let me explain how we use each of those a little bit differently. So first of all, team member calendars. So you can create an individual calendar for each one of your team members. So for us, I have my calendar, my admins calendar, and then our individual stylist um, calendars, as well as our mover. So when you have an individual, when you have those calendars set up, you can color code them. So at a glance, I can see my admins calendar is blue. One of my stylists is purple, another is green, another is like a pink color. Um, and so we can, I can toggle on and see very quickly, like without even having to dive into the details, who is, has got what calendar. And your, your team members can do the same thing so they can very quickly and easily sort through and see who's where for themselves at a, any given time. So it's really, really fantastic and it's super, super valuable to see where you have openings available for, you know, um, e evaluation appointments or photo styling appointments or installs or pulls or any of the variety of appointments you might have. If you have to schedule like an outside vendor to come in, say you're doing design work, it's very easy for you or an admin to pull up the calendar to see when you're available or when, you know, when you might have time. So it makes it really, really nice to just quickly at a glance be able to see what your entire team is doing. You can see who's on vacation, um, all of that. It's really, really cool. So we do that as well. We track, we have our team members enter all of their time off inside of their calendar so that we can just keep track on who's where at any given time. So that's the first thing that we do. The second thing is that we have service calendars. So we have calendars for styling evaluations, for vacant installs and vacant pulls. And those are really the key ones, photo styling as well. So we can quickly, again, see what services are being delivered at any given time. So they're also co color coded. 
And the way that I started using this in the business originally was when I was looking to hire admin support. And what I did was I went in and I created these service calendars so that she could see what my vision was for what appointments would happen when and what were the hours of operation so that if somebody called with an inquiry for a styling evaluation, she could pull up the styling evaluation um, calendar and she could pull up mine so she could see them together so she could see when I would be available during a time that I thought was ideal for our styling evaluations. And as you know, if you've listened to me for any period of time, our standard is 10 to 12 and 1 to 3. And occasionally, you know, we can shift those times around, but those are our standard calendar times. Actually, I talked about it in our episode last week about work weekly workflow cadences um, so that she got really comfortable knowing that those are our appointment times and they could see when I had availability. And then as we added team in, she would just open up to look at the newest team members availability and how did that overlay with the styling evaluation appointments we had available. So it, it became very helpful that way. And especially when you're getting into the logistics of vacant work as well, and you've got multiple steps for that, or, and you've got multiple players involved in that. So you may have a vacant um, pull that needs to happen on one day. You might need the movers to pick it up on another day to deliver it. You might have an install happening even another day. You know, I think I shared with us, we ended up having our moving team um, deliver everything the day ahead um, for us because for us, our furniture came separately. Our furniture came from furniture rental. So our builder, I mean, our mover would go in and deliver everything that we needed to set up and be ready for when the furniture arrived. So we could roll out the rugs and get them vacuumed. We could get all the bathrooms done. We could um, start steaming any bedding that needed to be steamed. We could start accessorizing kitchen counters right away. So by the time the furniture arrived, we were really just doing our very last layer of styling. So you can start to use your service calendars again to see when your team is available to do your pull. And this is really important when you, you're still in that phase where you don't necessarily have consistent work every week um, and you're growing toward that. So this is really, again, for that growth and accelerate business owner who you're in early accelerate. Once you get toward the end of your accelerate phase and you're heading into leverage, that's when your schedule is more consistent, especially in the busier times of the year. So that's how we use that. So again, we could pull up and immediately look at when do we have, when do we say that we want to do um, inventory pulls, who's available for it, and then we could just add them to that schedule. Super, super easy. The added benefit to um, setting up your Google calendars in these ways is that when you set up your team calendar, you can sync it with other scheduling apps like Acuity. We love Acuity for a whole host of reasons, and I probably will do a whole podcast about my love for Acuity. But what happens is when you want to have clients have the ability to see what appointments you have available so that they can book them, and, and this is we do this for our um, photo styling and our styling evaluations, and it works beautifully, is that the Acuity pulls the information from your Google Calendar. So as long as your Google Calendar is up to date, your Acuity Calendar is up to date and appoint your clients will only see appointments that are available with your various team members in order to schedule. Um, so you are able to start to add some audit, like automagical processes, I call them, into your business when you start using your Google Calendar. There's a whole host of ways that you can um, create all kinds of, you know, they call them zaps to create automation in your business when you use a Google Calendar. So it's um, so anyway, once a client books on the Acuity Calendar, it will automatically populate onto their Google Calendar that they have an appointment and it notifies them and sends out reminders and all of that great stuff. So it's really great to have your starting point as a Google Calendar. Okay, so that's how we use um, Google Calendar for our team and our service calendars. The second way that we use is the information sharing piece. So for a lot of us, especially when doing, well, actually both, I was going to say styling evaluations and when you're doing 
um, vacant or occupied staging, there's a whole lot of information that you need to gather to have available for your team members. So we use Google Google Calendar for this because you can capture a lot of information inside the Google Calendar appointment. The first is in the event name itself. So when we create um, an appointment for our team members, say let's use the example of a styling evaluation, um, they at the beginning of the um, appointment name, it says SE for styling evaluation. Then it gives the client name and their um, realtor's name right in the event name. So if they have a realtor, then as you dive deeper into creating a Google Calendar entry, you can enter a location. And when you're on your mobile app, when you've got an address in that location line, you can click on it and it will take you take you to Google Maps to give you the time that it'll take to get there as well as the directions so that you can plan ahead even remotely when you're out and about, you know, as our team members are out and about maybe at other appointments. There's also a phone number that is hyperlinked for your clients. So if you need to call them on the go, you just need to go to the calendar, open up the appointment and click to call them. It's right there. You don't need to go try to dig through anything else. In addition, there are notes. Um, there's a note section when you create an event inside of your Google Google Calendar. So um, you can put things like the client's email address, their name, they, again, the name of the realtor, how to access the property. Is there a lockbox? What, what's the code? Where is it located? Is there a special parking circumstance? Um, we can link to the photos for the property right there. We keep our um, photos inside Google folders. So we can link to the folders right inside the description and it's a hyperlink. So our team members only need to go to their calendar appointment to get all of the information that they need for any given appointment. They can also see if someone else has been assigned along with them for an appointment. So whether that's a photo styling or a vacant styling because they can look on the calendar and they can see at the same appointment time, the, the the SE or the VS or the PS, what who is on that with them. So it's just a great central point of uh, just tons of information. So if I have not made a compelling enough case for Google Calendar, I- I'll definitely try again because I think it is really a brilliant tool to help you streamline the systems in your business. So that, my friend, is your little sip for the week. I hope it has been very, very helpful to you. I hope you have a wicked good week, and I will see you next time where we will be talking about how to use Google Drive for your staging business if you're not already using it. So I'll tell you how we use it. All right, everybody, have a great week. I will see you next week. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Staging Sips podcast. If you love what you've learned here today, please take a minute to rate and review it so more staging business owners can find us. And if you want to learn more about how to market and grow your staging business more strategically, I'd love to see you join us inside of the Rethink You Accelerate Mentorship Program. It is open enrollment. You can get more details at rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash rethink you. Would love to see you inside.